To streamline the process of test creation, Test Architect provides the Action Recorder. Use the Action Recorder to monitor your actions as you interact manually with an application under test. The Recorder captures your clicks, mouse movements, and key presses and records them as keyword-based action lines, writing them out to a test module or user-defined action. Moreover, screen output can also be captured, allowing your test to verify the application's response to your inputs. Ultimately, what you have is a test that can be replayed during automation, no different than one that was written by hand. In this session, we'll use the Action Recorder within the Internet Explorer browser to generate automated tests for a web application. The web application we'll be working with is the Amazon.com website. On a step-by-step -step basis, we'll follow this simple test case. First, start up Internet Explorer. Following that, enter Amazon.com into the address bar of the browser, then hit Enter. Once in the Amazon site, select the product category of Books, then perform a search for the term Testing Applications on the Web. Amazon should now display a list of books matching your search text. To ensure that the expected book is now being displayed, create a checkpoint to verify that the title, Testing Applications on the Web, Test Planning for Mobile and Internet-Based Systems does indeed appear in the search results. Find the book in the results and click its link. Once you're in the Items Details page, add it to the shopping cart. Verify your last action was received and properly handled by checking for the presence of the Added to Cart text. We'll also verify that we're being quoted the correct price for the item. Finally, close the browser. Once finished with the steps of our test case, we can stop the action recorder. So now, let's get our hands dirty. If it's not already running, start up Test Architect. In Test Architect, create a new test module or open an existing one. That's up to you. In the editor, place the cell pointer on the line where you wish to have the action recorder insert the lines that it generates. Don't worry about creating enough space for the lines. The recorder will ensure that nothing below them is overridden. Now press F6 or click the Action Recorder's Record button on the toolbar. The Recording toolbar appears in the lower right corner of the screen, indicating that Recording Mode is now in effect. In this use case, the Action Recorder will record your interactions in the Internet Explorer browser. So let's open Internet Explorer from the Start menu. Enter Amazon.com into the address bar, then hit Enter on your keyboard to navigate to the site. Once in Amazon, select Books from the Product Category drop-down list. Enter Testing Applications on the Web into the search field, then press Enter on your keyboard. The current page now should display the search results, that is, books related to testing applications on the web. Let's create a checkpoint right here to verify the expected book is displayed. Use your mouse to drag the check button from the recording toolbar to the testing applications on the web, test planning for mobile and internet based systems book in the results. The check action dialog box appears indicating that it's preparing to generate a check control property action. Note by the way that for some UI element types, you can select the type of checkpoint action to be generated. In this case though, we are working with an HTML heading element, and the only available action for that is check control property. The dialog box also allows you to select which property of the element is to be checked. In our case, we want to verify that this heading element displays the correct string. Let's select the control property of text, with an expected value of Testing Applications on the Web, Test Planning for Mobile and Internet-Based Systems. Click Use. Now select the expected book in the results list. Once the item detail page for the book is loaded, click the Add to Cart button. Once again, we want to verify that the application has responded in the expected manner. Let's confirm that the item has really been added to the cart by checking for this text. 
Again, drag the check button from the recording toolbar, releasing it over the added to cart text. Again, the check action dialog box appears, indicating that it's preparing to generate a check control property action. And we'll again select a control property of text, which this time has an expected value of added to cart. Let's do the same to verify the book's price of $32.96. Again, drag the check button from the recording toolbar, releasing it over the price. And we'll again select a control property of text, which this time has an expected value of $32.96. Finally, close the browser. Now click Stop on the recording toolbar. Now, assuming you are doing all this for the first time, you are presented with a new Interface Definitions dialog box. This appears because the windows and controls you've just interacted with are not yet defined in the interface definitions of your project. Well, we're going to define them now so that interface entities and elements are created for the windows and controls listed here. Once we do that, if we run the Action Recorder again in this project, the controls here won't reappear. Only new controls that we haven't yet defined will appear in this dialog box. The dialog box is comprised of three panels. The New Interface Entities and Elements panel is a list of the windows and controls involved in the previous recording and which require interface definitions. The names accompanying interface entities are Test Architect's suggested TA names, which are based on various property values that it finds. These names aren't always the most descriptive or succinct, but you're free to modify them. The Properties panel displays the list of properties for whichever window or control is selected, along with their values at the time of capture. And finally, the Screenshot panel presents a picture of the selected window. If the selected item is an element on that window, it is outlined in red. As mentioned, you may change the names that the recorder assigns to the windows and controls. These will become the TA names, so generally you'd want to opt for names that are short and user-friendly. Let's rename the window node that represents the Amazon homepage. From the New Interface Entities and Elements panel, right-click it and select Rename, and type Homepage. We verify the title, Testing Applications on the Web, Test Planning for Mobile and Internet-Based Systems, on the Search Results page. So let's rename its parent window to Search Page. It was from the Items Detail page that we clicked the Add to Cart button. So rename its parent to Item Page. Finally, rename the window node in which the Add to Cart text and the price were checkpointed to Item Added. Now, a lot of the control nodes could benefit from renaming as well, but there's one in particular that is really, really badly named. This one, URL, is actually the drop-down list in which we selected the Books category for our search. So how about renaming it Search Category? There now, that's much better. When you're ready, click Save. Now, your interface definitions of Windows and Controls have been saved, and the action lines representing the operations you performed on the AUT have been generated and inserted into the test module. Let's take a look at those action lines. Let's start here. The Navigate action is generated when you open a URL address in a browser and interact with an HTML element. But note that this was not the first action recorded. Actions that you performed before this Navigate were, interestingly, recorded by the action recorder and then commented out by it. Why? Well, when you test a web application, which generally begins by opening a browser and navigating to a web page, the recorder assumes that the actions preceding the navigation are incidental to the test. It keeps them, just in case that assumption is wrong, but does comment them out. You, of course, are free to uncomment them, delete them, or ignore them. The first thing you did on the Amazon homepage was select a category of books from the drop-down control in preparation for your search. In response, the recorder generated this SELECT action. Next, you entered the search text TESTING APPLICATIONS ON THE WEB, which was noted as an ENTER action line. After entering the text, you hit the ENTER key. Sending non-printing characters such as ENTER to an AUT is the job of the TYPE action. Hence, the recorder wrote out a TYPE action line here, specifying that the ENTER key is to be sent. The first thing you did after running the search was instruct the action recorder to generate a checkpoint, 
to allow your test to verify that the application responded properly. That is responsible for this check control property action line, which ensures that a page of search results is now being displayed. Note that the action line checks that the control's text property has a value of testing applications on the web, test planning for mobile and internet-based systems. These are the settings you chose in the check action dialog box that accompany the checkpoint during recording. A click action was generated when you clicked on the book you selected. Following that, after the item page loaded, you click the Add to Cart button, generating another click action line. Like the previous checkpoint, two more check control property actions were created in response to your telling the recorder to create checkpoints verifying the Add to Cart text and the price of $32.96. Finally, a closed window action line was generated when you close the browser. And that's it. By recording your manual interactions with the target application, you have now created a test without writing a single line in the editor. You can now execute your test just as you would any other. The Action Recorder is one more way in which Test Architect helps you streamline the process of test creation and deployment. One final note. The Action Recorder generates system level actions and sequences of system level actions are best relegated to user-defined actions, leaving your test module's test cases to consist of higher level logic. To learn how to rapidly generate a user-defined action from the test lines you've just recorded, please see our Getting Started video number 6, Creating a User-Defined Action.